to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, All right, Wi Fi's, welcome back to yet another truly underground transmission of the Wireless Woman. Do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Well, when you like it, I love it. And if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. <laughs> the notification bell for notifications of when I go live and when I upload new content. Welcome Wi-Fi's. We are in season three of The Wireless Woman, but I am going to be reviving what actually is my favorite series on The Wireless Woman channel, which is the Cult of Personality series. It hasn't been my most viewed series, but it is my favorite where I talk about all things that are related to narcissistic abuse. I myself am a survivor, having been married to <laughs> not one, but two narcissists. It really is true. When they say that for a narcissist, marriage is not the beginning of the relationship. It's the finish line for them. The best. When they say, giving you the best that I got. You got all of that on this side of them nuptials. <laughs> on this side of those vows, baby. When they say it for better or for worse, that's what they meant. I gave you the better and now you about to get the worse. They like Drake. They be on their worst behavior, okay? I'm on my worst behavior. But the subject of today's podcast is all about why. <laughs> why the narcissist actually loves going to couples therapy with you. Okay. Now, I know if you're like me, you realized at a certain point in your relationship that something wasn't quite right. Something was, something was a little bit off with this other person. I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run amok. And if you encourage them at any length of time to go to therapy on their own, you were probably highly unsuccessful with that endeavor. But despite all their resistance, when you first brought up the concept of going to marriage counseling or couples therapy or premarital therapy, they're going to act like they don't want to go. But if you notice, they'll actually turn around and go. And I thought it was odd how immersed in us going to couples therapy my narcissist was until I began to understand so much more about the disease itself. You are with a person who has a disorder. It would be like lupus or diabetes or cancer. You have to treat it that way. Now, most of those things can be managed, but a lot of those things really aren't going to be cured. It's about making the adjustments in your life to now live with a disease or the disorder. And some people will make that choice when it comes to being in a relationship with narcissists. They will whittle away at themselves and find a nice, small, balled up place where they can subsist with that person. They'll learn all the presets of their narcissist, when to feed them, when they're angry. They'll learn how to deal with silent treatments. They will learn how to deal with the gaslighting and subsist. But just know that like a person with, you know, Parkinson's disease or multiple sclerosis, it will continue over time and become more aggravated as that person goes into decline. All of us will age, get older. All of us will have to deal with our own mortality. And 
narcissistic people they don't want to grow up they are the toys of us kids of society so you're you're going to be dealing with just like a toddler who can't run and do the things that they want to do and they start whining and crying and complaining when they really just need to like take a nap you're going to be dealing with that as that person ages and gets older but some people will find the happy medium which is completely over on the side of the narcissist but it will work for them now whether they become a whole fulfilled thriving version of themselves probably not they'll have to feed whoever they could have been to the narcissist to survive they will have to sacrifice themselves on the altar of the narcissist's ego but you know, for the people who feel like they can live that way and do that. Cheers to you. But for those of us who have already been through years of trauma and years of generational curses that we are trying our best to overcome, that's just not going to be the type of relationship that is going to lend itself to helping you produce the best version of yourself. Now, once you start to think to yourself, like therapy can help, it can help us. You're, you've got this good intention for your reasons of going to therapy. And like I said, me and my second ex-husband who has vowed on a blood oath that I will never speak on him and what are you going to do? A big part of the process that narcissistic abuse survivors have to go through in order to reclaim their voice and really cement themselves into that healing process is to acknowledge what has happened to you. You've been invalidated. You've been quieted. You have been gaslit for so long that you can't continue to live under the rules that the narcissist had for you. (laughs) <laughs> when y'all were together you know you have to begin to challenge yourself to be that courageous person because one of two things can only happen to bring well one of three things can only happen to bring that narcissistic relationship to an end <laughs> you or your narcissist dies to one of us dies or you get discarded or they discard you But either way, however the disengagement from your narcissist happens, you'll find yourself still on those presets of, I can't tell anyone what I've been through. Well, is it really what I thought it was or am I overreacting? I need to control my emotions. And until you really turn around and confront yourself for what you allowed to happen to you, you're going to consistently be in a unhealed place it's like the scar tissue it covers over but it doesn't heal down on the inside so what I've learned about narcissist and narcissism is that the narcissist is somewhat of a bone collector and I actually have an episode in this series called the bone collector (laughs) where I explain that in much deeper detail than what I'm going to go into here But because these are people who like to hold on (laughs) to the tools, to the trophies that they've won and earned from devaluing you, gaslighting you, manipulating you, um, subjecting you to reactive abuse, each one of those things comes with like coins and tokens. And narcissists love to live through these moments with you and then relive them. And so, we would go into counseling and therapy and I would notice how quiet and receptive he would be when I would be telling my story and my sides of things. I expected him to be defensive, like, no, that's not how it happened, but he would listen so intently. And of course, when it came time for him to respond or tell his side of the story, it was complete fiction. (laughs) It was utterly, completely different than everything that I had said, but it was how intently he listened to my side of things 
during therapy, it made me want to be in counseling with him all the time because it was the only time I felt like I was heard. But now that I understand the disease better, oh, that, that stuff was getting him off. It was like me playing the greatest hits of the things that he had done to me. It was like, ooh, that's how that made her feel. Yeah, like he probably in his own mind had a notebook taking it down. Like it helps them to sharpen their abusive skills. It helps them to gather. It's like a research pro project. It, it helps them to gather the data and the statistics that, that are needed to perfect the art of dismantling disabling and devaluing you you're literally giving this person <laughs> the ammunition and they're just sitting in in there with you like no oh, really mm -hmm. <laughs> they're just racking it back so another thing that makes counseling so appealing for narcissistic people is the purpose of counseling is not the same as therapy. Therapy is all about self-improvement. It's me versus me. How do I show up better? How do I bring out the best version of myself? How do I begin to work on the things that work against me having healthy relationships, meeting my goals, all that stuff? But counseling is a mediation. It's about finding a midpoint that both people can agree on. And because the cooperation of both people is the goal and it's the, the cause and the cure, if you will, their goal is to find a happy medium. And that happy medium might be 2080 in favor of the narcissist. If they can get you to agree to go 80%, with this narcissist, then they've achieved the goal of mediation and counseling. The goal is that the two of you see eye to eye. Not that, that seeing eye to eye is equitable, <laughs> that it's fair, that it brings out the best of the character of both people. It's about resolving the dispute. So if I feel like you owe me $50, but you feel like you owe me 10 but I insist that I'm only going to take $40. Like, okay, listen, I'll take 40. And then you say, okay, if it, if it, if it stops us from continuing to fight and argue over it, fine, you can have the $40. Well, the mission of counseling and therapy has been solved. It's, it's been resolved at that point. You know, counseling has done what it came to do is put you both on one page, even if that page is chaos. <laughs> so be careful with these narcissistic people as you're going into counseling and therapy with them because you have a goal of some good and altruistic result and they do not. Couples counseling is not the place that's going to repair a relationship with a narcissist. I could tell you right now, just. Don't even waste your time. Go to therapy yourself. Build a support system around yourself. Get all of the toxic people that you may have in your own life that are draining you out of the equation. It's what they call an elimination diet. It's just like if you're trying to lose weight. As long as you're eating all the stuff that puts weight on you, you can't begin to put the good things in. So instead of eating a bunch of junk food, eat some fruit, drink some water. If you focus on trying to get the junk food out, instead of focusing on trying to get more water, more fruit, more vegetables in, then you'll end up wasting the time that you could spend developing good behaviors, trying to eliminate the bad ones. So more often than not, if you are in a relationship with a narcissist, you've already been in compromising, unbalanced, draining relationships. So as you begin to cut away at the things that are keeping you from being the best version of yourself, eventually you'll isolate the cancer. And once the cancer is isolated, then you can begin to put the appropriate amount of energy 
towards eradicating and curing it. So I would love to hear anything else that you think I missed, any other tactics, any other stories that you have from your experiences with a narcissistic partner. Because the more we share our stories with each other, one, it validates our own feelings and emotions about what happened to us because we know the truth. <laughs> even if everybody else doesn't see it, even if your mama say he's a good man, Savannah, he's a good man. He's a good man, Savannah. A good man. You know the truth. <laughs> and, and, this is a space where you can speak that truth, you know, and as we hear other people's stories, you end up not feeling so alone, which was what that narcissist had planned for you. The jail you plan for me is the one you're going to rot in. But until the next episode, you already know the drill. Drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments i look forward to engaging with you there till the next time we don't negotiate with terrorists